Shalom, shalom, I need you who are Once again, I'm back with another one, ladies and gents. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Of course, as you see, you can definitely see the videos that I have provided for you at youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter. Um, as you already know, I'm Judah, and of course, I'm called the Shooter because I shoot out information. Um, and I'm a straight shooter. I'm going to give it to you as is. You know, so definitely go ahead, like, share, and subscribe. YouTube.com slash Judah the Shooter once again. Now, ladies and gents, since 2015, I want to say, uh, even on my old YouTube channel, I had been giving you videos um, about what's known as the Apocrypha, which I'll do in a second. Uh, one of the latest videos I did with the Apocrypha, of course, was uh, two months ago. Um, and I talked a little bit about it as well. Uh, my latest video was Who's the Jews? Definitely go ahead and watch that documentary. It's definitely pretty good. And there were, most I will know will be a part two. Okay, so going back, as I've stated, um, for years I have been telling you all about the Apocrypha books. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and get into a really good lesson today. Now, Apocrypha is just a title, which means hidden or secret, etc. Now, so there are various books of the Bible that uh, do have the Apocrypha in it. Uh, for example, if you look at the Oxford Study Bible, this definitely has the Apocrypha books in it as well. Uh, it's different from uh, the King James Version, which we'll talk about in a second. Then you have the uh, the New Oxford Annotated Bible. Now, if you saw my documentary back in 2015, which was released in 2016, but technically it was in 2015 when I actually did it. Uh, so in 2015, I did a documentary called Apocrypha on Trial, uh, my old channel. And uh, this is one of the things that I actually talked about in the uh, documentary as well. As you see, I still have it, ladies and gentlemen, still got it. Um, now, when dealing with the Apocrypha books, um, you have um, what's known as the Septuagint. Uh, the Septuagint contains the Apocrypha in it. Um, it's written in Greek, of course, translating this one is translated from Greek to the English. This is where you first see the Apocrypha books, etc., that are in here. Long story short. Um, now, there are other versions of the Bible that do have it the Geneva Bible in 1560. Uh, and I do have other versions of the Bible that contains the Apocrypha in it. Uh, but this will would have the Apocrypha books. Um, let me kind of just give you a snippet of what I'm talking about here. Let me go ahead and give you some. Here we go. This is what you know as Second Ezra as well. All right. So yes, Apocrypha there. And one of the most famous books, um, the most famous version of the Bible, uh, the King James Version Bible, was, which was authorized to be translated in year 1611. Um, this is this is the original King James Version of the Bible, as you see here. All right. Yeah, right there, 1611. You see the year there. And it does contain the uh, Apocrypha books as well, as you see here. All right, the Apocrypha. All right, look at that right there. It'll tell you. Um, right up in here. All right. It tell you means hidden a secret. All right. Now, that being said, ladies and gents, we're going to go ahead and get to a great little lesson. Once again, you can definitely contact me at youtube.com slash shooter. Duh. Shooter. All right. Now, if you do not have access to the Apocrypha, you can definitely get these you get access to the books online. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our Bibles to the book of Tobit. That's what we're gonna be talking about today, all right? Now, you can go to kingjamesbibleonline.org slash apocrypha books, all right? Apocrypha dash books, okay? And what it'll do is it'll lead you to those 14 books that you know as the Apocrypha. Okay. Now, that being said, um, notice here says the Apocrypha is a section of books which were published in the original 1611 King James Version Bible, in which I had already showed you. These Apocrypha books were positioned between Old and New Testament. It says it also contained maps and genealogies. 
The Apocrypha was part of the King James Bible or the King James Version for 274 years until being removed in what year? 1885. Uh, then, uh, then it says A.D. A portion of these books were called Deuterocanonical books by some entities, such as the Catholic Church. Now, I talk a little bit about this in Apocrypha on Trial, my old documentary. Now, this is one of my arguments in the um, documentary, and we're actually going to talk a little bit about this today, too. Matter of fact, what I'll do is I'll even take a clip from my old documentary that I did in 2015 and actually put that here so you can actually see what I said back then. Um, so it says, many claim the Apocrypha should never have been included in the first place, raising doubt of its validity and believing it was not God inspired. Now, this is one of the things I talked about in the documentary. For instance, a reference about magic as if walking on water isn't what you would call today magic or as if parting the Red Sea or as if making time stand still and Joshua 10 and 13, etc., wouldn't be considered what you call today magic. That can go on and on. But anyway, <laughs> um, magic seems inconsistent with the rest of the Bible. Tobit chapter 6, verses 5 through 8, and we will be talking about this today. Um, but that won't be the main focus, but I will go over this. Um, but it says, others believe it's valid and that it should never been removed, huh, such as myself, that it was considered part of the Bible for nearly 2,000 years before it was recently removed. Re uh, recently removed a little more than 100 years ago. Now, so that being said, we're going to go ahead and get on into it. So, uh, and I even talk about Martin Luther in the uh, documentary as well, uh, Apocrypha on Trial. So definitely make sure you watch it. It's about eight hours. So, yeah. Now, one of the things we're going to discuss is the book of, matter of fact, let me pull it up first. Tobit, chapter four, in the 12th verse. This is one of the main things that we're going to discuss first. It says, beware of all hoarding, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of your fathers, and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of your father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets. No, which is was Noah. So Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. It says, remember my son, keyword, that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred, another keyword, and were blessed in their children and their seed shall inherit the land. And their seed shall inherit the land. And their seed shall inherit the land. Key phrase. This is what we'll be talking about. So before diving into it, there is lots of doctrines that is surrounded by Tobit 4 and 12. So we're going to clear up a lot of the misconceptions that people may or may not have about Tobit 4 in the 12th verse. So what we're going to do is get some understanding. Now, this is about 14 chapters in the book of Tobit. I definitely urge you all to read the book of Tobit in its entirety so that you can get a full sense of what is being relayed in the scriptures in Tobit, the fourth chapter, which was, uh, which was, I would say took place around seventh century BC. All right. During the Syrian captivity. Now, so we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and dive on into it. Why would he say around the 7th century? Let's get that first hint there. Let's go back to chapter 1 first. All right, Tobit chapter 1. Let's look at Tobit 1 and 1. All right, now, as you already know, as I told you earlier, um, you can definitely um, like, share, and subscribe. And I'm at youtube.com slash Judah, the shooter. All right, so we're going into chapter 1, ladies and gents. I'll go ahead and give you a second to get there. And for those of you who are following along, of course, as you know, you're going to go ahead and be able to enjoy. So let's go ahead and get it. All right. So Tobit 1 and 1. Here we go. Which reads, it says, The book of the words of Tobit, son of Tobiel, the son of Ananiel, the son of Aduel, the son of Gababel, um, then it says, the son of Asiel, 
of the tribe of Nephtali. So now we know what tribe they were from. All right. So we look at Tobit. Of course, he was of the tribe of Nephtali. All right. One of the tribes of Israel, of course. So it says, who in the uh, in the time of Enemesar, which is what you know as Shalom and Nanzer, some would say Shalom and Nanzer the fifth. All right. It says, King of the Assyrians was led captive out of um, Thisbe, which is at the right hand of that city, which is called property, I mean, properly Naphtali in Galilee, which is above who? Asher or Aser, which is also one of the other tribes of Israel as well. So it says, I, Tobit, have walked in, walked in all the days of my life in the ways of truth and justice. And I did many alms deeds, which is what charity, all right? It says to my brethren and my nation who came with me to Nineveh in the land of the Assyrians, all right? So that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get some understanding. So now we know he's of the tribe of Naphtali. So let's go ahead and go to Tobit 4, and we're going to look at the 12th verse first. All right, Tobit 4 and 12 once again, which says, Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly or mainly take a wife of the seed of your fathers, which is what? Ancestors. Okay. Then it says, and take not a strange woman, which we'll deal with later on what a strange woman is. All right. Then it says to wife, which is not of your father's tribe. All right. Matter of fact, I'll just let you know a strange woman is a harlot, a prostitute. All right. But then it says, um, which is not of your father's tribe. Now, what tribe was he from, guys? We just seen early. He was from the tribe of what? You remember? Naphtali. Naphtali. That was the tribe that he was from. All right. That's what he mean by when he said your father's tribe. But then, um, then Tobit tells his son. Tobias, uh, which is the son's name, he says, for we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So then Tobias, um, then Tobit tells his son, Tobias, he says, my son, that our ancestors from the beginning, even that they all marry wives of their own kindred. And we'll be dealing with that word as well. Okay. We we'll definitely be dealing with that. It's dealing with your family or your relatives. All right. So then he says, and will bless in their children and their and their seed shall inherit the land. Now let's look at verse 13 as well. All right. Let's look at the 13th verse. The next verse here it says, Now therefore, my son, love your brother and despise not in your heart your brethren. All right. Then he says, What? here key phrase the sons and daughters of who your people your people that's what he says then he says and not taking a wife of them meaning of your people specifically your relatives all right which of course we will dive into shortly okay now he says for in pride is destruction mm, sounds familiar right and much trouble and in lewdness is decay and great faint for lewdness for lewdness is the mother of famine now why did tobit say this to his son tobias because this man had a son who had to marry a daughter from his tribe all right let me go back here this is this is um what we're going to talk about. What most don't know is Tobias by law, by the law of Moses, he had no choice, no choice but to marry a daughter, someone's daughter from this particular tribe and we'll learn later. Now, the daughter also had to marry which is um uh, Tobias future wife she also had to marry someone of her father's tribe. And they was the only people left of the tribe of Naphtali that had to get married. Had to 
by law by law all right so this is one of the things we're going to talk about we're going to talk about um, one of the uh, meet one of the major key points that we'll be talking about is this told before getting the surrounding context we're going to talk about uh the evil spirit that was in love with tobias future wife asmodeus the song would say asmodeus all right We'll also talk about um, was Tobit six dealing with witchcraft, or was it just an ancient remedy that can also be traced back to the ancient Assyrians and Egyptians and either and even other cultures such as the Greeks who did things similar to this as well. Um, we'll be talking about that. We'll be talking about uh, in Tobit the uh, seventh chapter. Um, you get some that will use that chapter and say, "Oh, see right here, you have to have a marriage certificate." So. We're going to get the correct understanding and the proper understanding. And that's, this is why I will let you all know, if you have never read the book of Tobit, I suggest you read all 14 chapters, even before watching this. Because once you watch this, you'll be like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember, I remember reading this. It'll be fresh in your mind. Or if not, just read the whole entire book when you get done. Listen to the video. It's only 14 chapters. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. Okay, so now, according to Numbers 27 and Numbers the 36 chapters, guys, these are two chapters in the law of Moshe or Moses, that if a man died and did not have any sons, his inheritance was passed down to his daughter. Now, if you've been watching my videos for years, I have been teaching this. This is nothing new. I even taught about it. I taught on this in the apocrypha on trial documentary back in 2015 so i gotta go back and repeat myself so um when you read this is dealing with uh the laws of inheritance all right things that is passed down from uh, one generation to the next obviously um if the man didn't have no daughters then of course it would be among one of his brethren etc one of his kinsmen or his kindred all right so that being said what we're going to do is we're going to go to the book of Numbers, all right? Numbers, chapter 27. Numbers, chapter 27, ladies and gentlemen. Give you a second to get there, all right? So I first want to deal with verse 8 first. Matter of fact, no, I'm just read on down. As you see right here, laws of inheritance, all right? Laws of inheritance. Let me take a sip of my juice. All right. It says... Then came the daughters of Zeolifad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh. Then it says what? Of the families of Manasseh. All right. So now we know what tribe they're from. All right. The son of Joseph. All right. It says, and these are the names of who? His daughters. Malah, Noah, and Hogla, and Milcah and Tirzah. Now let's see what he said about these daughters that was of the tribe of Joseph, AKA the tribe of Manasseh. What does it say about these daughters? It says they stood before Moses and before Eleazar the priest and before the princesses and all the congregation by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation saying, okay, what did they say? Our father died in the wilderness and he was not in the company of them. They gathered themselves together uh, against the Lord in the company of Korah, but died in his own sin, what? And had no sons. And had no sons. And remember, we're dealing with what? A law of inheritance. So letting us know that these daughters right here that's pleading the case for their father, one of the things they told Moses and Eleazar, like, look, our father died. He had no sons. Now they ask the question, why should the name of our father be what done away from among who his kindred or his family because he have no son give unto us therefore a possession among who the brethren of our father so in other words like look our dad died why should his name be done away with let us get a portion of the land in other words we would take the place as if we were a son since our dad didn't have sons and he's dead. All right. Now, verse five, it says, and Moses brought what? 
their case or their cause before the Lord. And the Lord spake to Moses saying, this is what the Lord said concerning these women or the daughters. So the, the daughters of the only fast speak right. Like, yeah, you know what? Hey, they right. He said, you shall surely give them a possession or a portion of inheritance among who? The father's brethren. That would be who? Their uncles. It says, and you shall cause what? The inheritance of their father to pass on to who? To them. Letting you know that when the father dies and has no son, the inheritance of what he has can be passed down to the daughter, meaning they would take the place as his very own son. All right. Literally. All right. So let you know right there that it get pa it gets passed down through the daughter. All right. Verse eight. This is a very important verse right here. Pay close attention. All right. Verse eight says what? It says, and you shall speak unto the children of Israel, saying, if a man die. Now, this is a commandment now. They brought their case. Now he's saying, speak to the Israelites and say what? If a man die, have no sons, then you shall cause his inheritance to pass unto who? His daughter. His daughter. It says, and if he have no daughter, then shall you give his inheritance unto his brethren. And if he have no brethren, then you shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren. It says, and if his father have no brethren, then you shall give his inheritance unto his what? His kinsmen, which is what? His relatives that is next to him of his family. Look at that. And he shall possess it. And it shall be unto the children of Israel a statue of judgment as the Lord commanded Moses. So now we see right here in Numbers 27, 1 through 11, we dealing with the laws of inheritance. Let's deal with another one real quick because all this is going to make sense when we go to the book of Tobit. Listen to me, guys. What we're going to go over, especially dealing with the Tobit 4 and 12, if you don't understand Numbers 27 and Numbers 36, none of this is going to make sense. In fact, that's the biggest main point in the book, in the entire book of Tobit. All right? So I urge you to study the laws of inheritance, all right, or inheritance by marriage. And what you'll learn is this is going to play a very key factor when reading Tobit. In fact, if you're going to read Tobit, read Numbers 36 on your own. Then go and read Tobit, okay? Because this goes, you're going correspondence into that, all right? So, Numbers 36, verse 1, it says, it says, and the chief fathers of the family of the children of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of who? Manasseh, of the families of the sons of Joseph. This is the same family that we just learned about where? In Numbers 27, all right? In Numbers 27, we had just got done reading about this. This is why I say Numbers 27 and Numbers 36, all right? Remember? The um the daughters of Zeolophad, if you read uh numbers 27 and 1, when it tell you the daughters of Zeolophad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, there's Gilead right here. Look at that. Now we're reading about who? The families of the children of Gilead. Alright. And that's when it was telling you in uh number 27 and 1, it, it called him um the son of Makir. Uh um right here. Same thing there. Same thing in numbers 27 and 1. Alright. And it let you know that there were of the tribe of Manasseh, the son of Manasseh, the families of Joseph. Same thing here. Numbers 27, 1, Numbers 36 and 1. All right. So just, just in case you forgot right here. This is what you just read basically right here. And Numbers 36 and 1. See that? What I highlighted for you. Okay. Numbers 36 and 1, it says, The chief fathers, chief fathers of the families of the children of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, the, of the families of the son of Joseph, came near and spake before Moses and the princesses, and the princes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel. Verse 2, it says, And they said, The Lord commanded my Lord to give the land of inheritance by lot or by portion to the children of Israel. And my Lord was commanded by the Lord to give the inheritance of Zeolophad, our brother, unto who? His daughters, which would be who? Their nieces. 
All right. It says, it says, and if they be married to any of the sons of the other tribes of the children of Israel, because remember, they from where? The tribe of Joseph. Meaning, so it's letting us know. Now, if his daughters who receive that lot of land, that property of land, if they, he, he's saying if they were married to any of the sons of other tribes of the children of Israel, meaning one of the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Levi, right? The tribe of Gad, etc. The tribe of Benjamin, the tribe of Zebulun, etc. It says, then shall the inheritance be what? Taken. From the inheritance of our fathers and you know that's a big no-no like wait a minute if they go and marry somebody else like in other words when it comes time to doing this yo their husband is going to basically take over our plot our land etc now what's going to happen then it says and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe whom they are received see that and that, that that's not good because then it's like yo what was the point then if it's going to be put to inheritance on the tribe of whom they received, that makes no sense. It says, so shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. Like, yo, that wouldn't be fair. Okay? Verse 4. It says, and when the jubilee of the children of Israel shall be, then shall the inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe where unto they receive. So shall the inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of of the tribe of their fathers. Now, wait a minute. That would make no sense for them to do that. You see that? Then it talked about the year of Jubilee. What? During the year of rest, restoration, etc. You see that? It says, uh, verse 4 again. It says, And when the Jubilee of the year of restoration of the children of Israel shall be, then shall their inheritance be put unto the inheritance of the tribe Wherein two, they are received, meaning what? When all property that is has been restored to its original owners, in other words. That's what they're saying there. It says, so shall the inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of the fathers, meaning what? Their dad would lose his inheritance, even though he's gone. Now here come the law. All right, verse five. It says, there it says and moses commanded the children of israel all right according to the word of the lord saying the tribe of the sons of joseph have said well i mean they spoke right you know what they make a point what point think about it why would he then say hey the daughters can get uh the share of the land there right but then when they go get married, if they get married to somebody from a different tribe, then it's going to be taken away from them. Right there, it'll be taken away. So that's why I said, you know what? Good point. Spoke well on this. Now here come the law. Verse 6. All right? Verse 6, it says, um, what we at? yeah, here we go. Verse 6, it says, this is the thing which the Lord do a commanding, I mean, I'm gonna do a command concerning the daughters of Zeolophad, saying, Let them marry whom they think best. Like, mar let them marry whoever they want to. But look at this, though, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they, ma shall they marry. Now, remember earlier when we talked about here, um, um, not of your father's tribe. This is gonna make sense later. All right. So it's saying that the daughters can marry whoever they want, but they got to marry somebody of the tribe of their father, the tribe of their father. So when we go read the book of Tobit, all right, and we read about his son, Tobias, and Reguel and Edna's daughter, but um, who Tobias married, her name was Sarah. So Tobias married Sarah. All right. Now, when we read the story, we're going to learn something. This is, and we'll learn that this is why Sarah, she had to marry Tobias. And as we'll learn later, the angel that set this marriage up knew this according to the law of Moses. 
But before we continue, let me give you, matter of fact, let me give you a little snippet of what I've learned over the years when it came to the law of Moses concerning uh, this marriage, uh, the marriage, uh, uh, shall I say this, uh, um, this um, arranged marriage. So when we look at Tobit, this was a different type of arranged marriage that was set up by the angel because of what Moses commanded the daughters who had father, um, um, the daughters who had fathers with no other heir or inheritor. Meaning he didn't have nobody to inherit, meaning his sons. He didn't have no sons, all right? He didn't have no sons. So the daughter could take the place as if she was the son, all right? This is dealing with the rights of inheritance. Inheritance is something you inherit. It could be property. It could be anything that's passed down. Carrying on the lineage as well. That's another topic, though. So... I'll give you a little snippet real quick. Tobit, chapter six and verse 11. I think it's in verse 11. Here's a snippet here. This is what the angel had told Tobias. He says, for to, um, for to you do of right of her what? Appertain, belonging to. Seeing you what? Only are of her kindred. Because they were what? Cousins. They were family. That sounds like to, uh, Tobit 4 and 12. When Tobit, um, um, uh, when uh, Tobias' father told him to marry someone of his own kindred and how Noah, Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, remember he said there, remember my son that our fathers from the beginning? Because he was giving them the commands and advice on that. Like, look, look, don't be all mad and proud of that. Look, even I, even our fathers from the beginning, they did it. They all marry wives of their own kindred, mean their own family. All right? This wasn't talking about no, uh, oh, well, you know, don't go deal with that person of this race, that person of that race. No, we're going to read what Tobit Ford was actually talking about. All right? Now, so, um, yeah. And then it goes to talk about, um, in the Tobit 4 and 12, um, uh, how they were blessed in their children and the seed shall inherit their land. So, this is dealing with what, guys? The laws of inheritance, a.k.a. a share of the land. And this is what Numbers 27, Numbers 36 is about. Inheritance of what? Land. However, if a man died and had no sons, his inheritance didn't pass down to his daughters. I'm going to say it again. And this is why this arranged marriage between Sarah and Tobias had to happen. According to the law of Moses, and the angel knew this, which brings me to another little snippet. All right, the next verse. I'll grab that. The next verse. All right, when it says, it says, and the maid, to my Sarah, is fair, meaning she was pretty, beautiful, comely. It says, and wise. Now, therefore, hear me, and I will speak to her father. This is what the angel Raphael Azariah was saying, which we'll learn later. And uh, this is where he was talking to Tobias, the one who had to marry her, this beautiful, fair woman, Sarah. He said, I will speak to her father, and when we return from rages, we will celebrate the marriage. Now watch this. Look at what the angel said. For I know that Reguel, this is talking about Sarah's daughter, I mean Sarah's daddy. He said, I know that Reguel cannot, cannot, all right? This is what he says. He says, for I know this key word cannot marry her to another. Meaning, he, I know he can't marry her all to another man. I know that. That's what he's saying. Cannot marry her to another or someone else. According to the law of Moses. What law? Numbers 27, Numbers 36. Understand that? Remember number 36 and 6. They had the mat, they can get married to whoever they wanted, they thought best, but only to the family of the tribe of the father said that they had to marry. And the angel knew this. And that's why he's saying this. Said he should be given their death because the right of what? The right of inheritance. Do it rather. Look at that word appertain to you than to any other that's why the daughters of Zeolophad um 
plead their case for their father, and that's why their uncles wouldn't plead the case for um, uh, them as well. Because if they got married, then guess what happened? The share of the land goes to the husband, the, the man. And this is what he's talking about right here. And we'll learn later that Tobias actually did inherit that land of his father's. Sarah's uh, dad. We'll read that later. Okay? So this is dealing with the rights of inheritance. So the angel again, like y'all, he knew that them two had to get married and he knew that by law, as in the law of Moses, Reguel, Sarah's father, can't, 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 or cannot is the key word. He cannot marry off to somebody else. This means he had no authority to do that according to the law of Moses, which means once again, this was a special type of marriage. So when people be trying to use this, even when dealing with, uh, well, let's go right here, dealing with the bed chamber. They use this doctrine. It's like, yo, this was a whole different type of marriage. Y'all even read this story? So many doctors created around the story in Tobit. Little do they know that the people like me understand what happened during this time. And I know and understand that this, again, was a special case of marriage, not like uh, any of the regular marriage during the other times or other marriages. All right. This was different. All right. So this is dealing with the laws of inheritance. All right. Hopefully you all are following along and hopefully you all understand exactly what I'm talking about here. All right. So before we dive into this, all right, you have to understand this because this is why it's relevant to the case of Tobias who had to marry one of his own kindred of the tribe of Nephali, according to the law of Moses. All right. He had to do that. Remember Numbers 36, it says, this is the thing with, um, that the Lord command concerning the daughters of Zeolipath saying, let them marry whom they think best, but only to the tribe of the father shall they marry. So shall the inheritors of the children of Israel be remo um, removed from tribe to tribe. But every one, um, for every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritors of the tribe of who? Their fathers. The tribe of their fathers. Now let's go back to Tobit 4 and 12 really quick. Tobit 4 and 12. All right. Tobit 4 and 12. So it says, Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly, or most importantly, take a wife of the seed, meaning the offspring of your father, the ancestors, and take not a strange woman to wife, which is not of your father's tribe, which is what? Nephali. Notice he said, uh, he told Manny to take a wife, but specifically a wife of his own, of his own offspring. And it had to be one of his father's ancestor, but not just that, specifically a relative of the tribe of his father. That is the key in understanding this. Sounds like Numbers 36 and 7. When it says, so shall not the children of Israel be removed from tribe to tribe. And how every one of the children of Israel shall keep to himself the inheritance of the tribe of the fathers. But also in Tobit 4 and 12, as we see here, Tobit, which is his daddy, told his son, Tobias, what? What else do you see that stands out in this before dealing with this? He told him not to take a strange woman, strange woman as a wife. Told him not to do that. Told, he told him not to do that. A strange woman is a harlot, one who sells herself. Let's get an example of that. Let's go to the book of Judges real quick. I'll get an example. Judges chapter 11. All right, Judges chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, it says, Now Jephna, um, the Giladite, was a mighty man of valor. And he was the son of who? An harlot, a prostitute. That sounds like Toby 4 and 12. Right there, a prostitute. Says, um, 
where we at? Oh, here we go. It says, and Gilead begat Jephna. It says, and Gilead's wife bare him sons. And look at this. And his wife's son grew up, and they thrust out Jephna and said to him, you shall not inherit our father's house, for you are the son of who? Of a strange woman. She was a harlot. She was a harlot. A prostitute. A whore. You catch my drift? She was a whore. A harlot. All right? And she was called what? Strange woman there. All right? That's what this means in this text. So many examples I can give. Let's go to Proverbs. Was it Proverbs 7? Proverbs 7 and 4. Look at this. Wows of the harlot. Right there. Look at that. Hmm. Let's go ahead and look at here. It says, right here, it says in verse th four, it says, say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. Like treat wisdom like a sister and call understanding what? Your kinswoman, your relative. All right. Verse five, it says, that they may keep thee from what? The strange woman and from the stranger which flattereth her words. Look at that. This is dealing with what? A harlot, a prostitute. That's what this is dealing with. And it's saying what? In verse five, it says, um, that they may keep thee from the strange woman. Wisdom to keep you from that. That's what it'll do. Now look, check this out real quick. Let me show you all something. Let me uh, pull it up real quick. Bear with me, guys. Okay, here we go. Let me share my screen. Let's look at my eye. There we go. Boom. Uh, we're going to go to Proverbs chapter 7. And let's look here. In the good news. In the GNB, the good news Bible. It says, treat wisdom as your sister and incite as your closest friend. But which we know in the Bible say relative. It says, they will keep you away from what? Other men's wives. These haul at a whores. <laughs> from women with what? Seductive words. From seductive words. Other men's wives. These will be adulterous women, which will be harlots. All right. Now, let's go back real quick. All right. So here we know that this strange woman is a whore. All right. That's what it is. Now, so Tobias, which was the son of Tobit, as we see here, his daddy was telling him, don't take Hollis to wife. So it says, beware of all whoredom, all prostitution, my son. And most importantly, take a wife of the offspring of your ancestors and take not a harlot to wife, is what he's saying there. Which is not of the tribe of Nephali, is what he's basically saying. He says, for we of the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, what did they all three have in common? Didn't they all marry somebody whom they were related to? Of their family? Surely did. All three of them did, which makes sense. Which makes sense. And that's why he said, um, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, remember my son, that how I follow as many ancestors who? Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's what we're talking about. From the beginning, even that they, who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They all did what? They all married wives of their own kindred of a own relative. That's what they did. And this is linked to what? The laws of inheritance. Share of the land. Hopefully you all are following me, ladies and gents. Hopefully you all are following me. So, that being said, that's the first part. 
All right, and we are far from done. Matter of fact, let me type this in. Tobit 14. Tobit 14. And we're going to pull it up in the GNT version. Let's see what it says here. Tobit, uh, I mean, not Tobit 14, Tobit 4. I apologize. Tobit 4. Sorry about that. All right, Tobit 4. Let's see what it says here. Tobit 4. Okay. Let me pull it up. Okay. So, it says, son, be on guard against prostitutes. Above all, that's what it said chiefly, marry a woman of our tribe. Now, what tribe were they from, guys? The tribe of Nephthali. The tribe of Nephthali. It says, because we are descendants of the prophet, do not marry anyone who was not related to us. This is what he told him. Remember that Noah... Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our earliest ancestors, all marry what? Kindred, relatives. God blessed them with children, and so shall the descendants what will inherit the land of Israel. Son, be loyal to your own relatives, and don't be too proud to marry one of them. That's what he was telling him. Remember when you look at uh, the Tobit 4 and 13? When it, told, when it told you, despise not in your heart, your brethren, the sons and daughters of your people? and not taking a wife of them don't despise it don't be too proud to marry one of them it says such pride leads to terrible frustration and ruin just as laziness bring on severe poverty and causes starvation all right that's what he's saying there ladies and gents all right that's what he's saying there hmm so wait a minute didn't to Tobias marry his relative? And not just any old Israelite woman, but specifically his relative. Didn't he? Now, if you've never read this, you're going to find out later as we continue that he married his cousin. But first, we need, we need the backstory on what's going on and how did Tob uh, and how did Tobit um, how did Tobit's son, which name is Tobias, ended up having to marry Sarah according to the law of Moses? How did this happen? That's what we got to get to the bottom of. How did this happen? Why? Let's find out in the next clip. Now, as you know, as I've already stated, is youtube.com slash Judah the Shooter is which is the channel on which you can reach me definitely like share and subscribe so let's go ahead and move on so as i've already stated we need to backtrack get a bit of uh, the backstory now we're gonna go to tobit chapter three really quick so we're gonna go to verse i guess i'll start in seven all right tobit three and seven all right so it says uh, it came to pass in the same day that in Egbertain, a city of media, Sarah, uh-oh, the daughter of Reguel. All right. Now, this is the woman who eventually will marry Tobias, Tobit's son. All right. Now, Sarah had a father, obviously, Reguel, and the mother name was Edna which you read about in chapter seven, okay? So this Sarah, again, is the one of the tribe of Nephali whom has to marry Tobias. So verse seven, again, it says, and it came to pass the same day in Egbertain, a city in, a um, city of Media, Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, was also reproached by her father's maids. So you see, that was dogging her out. And let's find out why. Verse 8. All right. Verse 8. It says, Because that she had been married to seven husbands, whom Asmodeus or Asmodeus, the evil spirit that had killed before they lain with her. Does thou not know, said they, Who's the day? These maids. 
This is what they saying. That thou has strangled your husbands? This is what they saying about her. You strangled your husbands? You killed them. That you have already had seven husbands. Neither was thou named after any of them. Hmm. So, notice, again, she had seven husbands. And the evil spirit, Asmodeus, or Asmodeus, killed them, as you see. Right? And we'll find out why later. All right? So, they talking stuff about her. All right? Verse 9. Then it goes on to say in verse 9, it says, it says, What for doest thou beat us for them? If they be dead, go your ways after them. Let us never see of thee either son or daughter. Now those maids was cruel. They basically saying like, look, if they dead, then you can go and follow them. You can go where they at. You, you might well be dead too. We ain't want to see you with no kids. Jeez. Or children, etc. They basically you they basically look. You better off dead, just like the seven husbands you had. In fact, we never want to see you with children, in other words. Jeez. All right. Verse 10, it says what? When she heard these things, she was very sorrowful, so that she thought to strangle herself. Now, this is now this is crazy because they dogged her out, told her, look, you better off being dead, to the point she actually thought about it. She thought about killing herself, obviously. Jeez. So this is never get to the point to where you feel like you want to do something like that. Guard your mind. All right? But understand, if you have felt this way before, we can read what's, well, hey, some people in the Bible went through this. Man. It says she thought to have strangled herself. Now, remember, they accused her. Did you strangle your husbands? Man. So anyway, and she said, now pay attention. She says, I am the only daughter of my father. And if I do this, it should be a reproach unto him. Like, they're going to be talking about him. And I shall bring his old age with sorrow unto the grave. Notice, y'all. She's the only daughter of, of, of her father. This is going to be important later, seeing the fact that Sarah was from the same exact tribe that Tobias was from, as he told his son to marry one of your own kindred, of your ancestors, specifically of your father's tribe. They were from the same tribe, the tribe of Nephali. Now, when you continue on, you learn that not only she thought about taking her own life because of what was said about her, but look at look at verse 15. Let's jump down to 15 real quick. And look at that. Verse 15. Now, it says, And that I never polluted my, uh, my name, nor the name of my father, in the land of my captivity. Remember, they were in this, this is doing the uh, Assyrian captivity. Now, pay attention. Look at what she said. I am the only daughter of my father. Neither have he any child to be his heir or inheritor. So look at that. Her daddy only got one child. That sounds exactly like Numbers 27 and Numbers chapter 30. Six. Well, I will repeat again. But she says, I'm the only daughter of my father. Neither have neither have he any child to be his inheritor or heir. Neither any near kinsman nor any son of his alive to whom I may keep myself for a wife. Wow. So there was nobody else she could go and marry. Hmm. She said, my seven husbands are already dead. And why should I live? But if it please not thee that I should die, command some regard to be had of me and pity taken of me that I hear no more reproach because they was dogging her out. 
to the point she wanted to die. So, you see her dad had no sons, no near of kin, or what today we say no next of kin, no one but her, left of his tribe. Remember the law of Moses states that if a man died and had no sons, his inheritance was then passed down to who, y'all? His daughter. And again, when you learn and understand about the story of the daughters of Zeolophad of the tribe of Manasseh, or Joseph, then you know what I say is true. Just real quick, Numbers 27. Look at that eighth verse real quick, verse eight, right there. All right, I mean, starting seven. It says, the daughters of Zeolophat speak right. You should surely give them a possession of inheritance among the father's brethren. Now remember, her daddy ain't had it. He ain't had no father's brother. It said, you shall cause inheritance to be, uh, of the father pass on to them. But that couldn't have been her. Because he ain't had that. Verse 8. It says, um, And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a man die and have no sons, then you shall cause inheritance to pass unto his daughter. Now, guys, this was the case of Sarah's dad, according to Tobit. 3 and 15. According to Tobit 3 and 15 right here. That was the case when she said what? Um, I am the only daughter of my father. Neither has he any child to be his heir or inheritor. Meaning inherit the land. Inherit what he has. Inherit what's going to be passed down. He ain't got no kinsmen or no relatives nor any son that's alive, in other words. And ain't nobody else that she can marry at all. That's the case right here. That's the case. That's the case. Again. 5 through 11, it says, And Moses brought that case before the Lord. Verse 6, it says, And the Lord said unto Moses, saying, the daughter of Zeolophat speak right. Thou shalt surely give them a possession of inheritance among the father's brethren, and thou shalt cause an inheritance of their father to, to pass unto them. Now remember Sarah's dad, y'all had no one at all. See that? Look at verse 9. And if he had no daughter, then you shall give his inheritance to his brother. Now remember, she didn't have that. Verse 10. It says, and if he had no brother, he should have inheritance to pass to his father's brother. Sarah's dad couldn't because she was the only one. She's the only one. Verse 11. And if his father has no brother, then you shall give his inheritance unto who? His kinsmen, the kindred that is next to him of his family. And he shall possess it. And it shall be when the children of Israel are statue of judgment as an um, as the Lord commanded Moses, remember what Sarah stated in Tobit 3 and 15. I'm the only daughter of my father, neither have he any child to be their heir, heir or inheritor, neither any kinsman nor any son of his alive. So right there, she by herself. So this is the law. This is the law that Moses said how this was supposed to go dealing with the marriage of the uh, the marriage of the female heirs or inheritor. If a man had no sons, again, the woman will inherit as if they were a son to carry on the name of the father. However, remember they had to marry somebody of their father's tribe. That was the key. They had to marry somebody of their father's tribe. Once more, Numbers 36, Numbers 36, look at 6, Numbers 36 and 6, it says, this is the thing which the Lord have commanded concerning the daughters of Zeolophat, saying, let them marry to whom they think best or want to, only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. So this is why Sarah has to marry Tobias. Again, as we'll learn later, the angel that set up this marriage, he knew this. 
according to the law of Moses. And I already had given you all a snippet on this. They had to marry. They had no choice at all. Now we're going back to Tobit 3. All right. Going back to Tobit 3. And let's get us some understanding. All right. Hopefully you all are understanding this. Hopefully you all are understanding this. Once again, matter of fact, real quick, Tobit 6 and 12, real quick. Remember Tobit 6 and 12? When it said about Sarah, I'm, I'm starting at uh, 11, it says, uh, for to D, um, do the right, talking about the right of inheritance of her appertain, seeing you only you only are of her kindred, a family. And the maid is fair and wise. Now, therefore, hear me, and I will speak to her father, to Maraguel. And when we return from rages, we will celebrate the marriage. For I know that Raguel cannot marry her to another according to the law of Moses. Look at that. So, right there, he knew that he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it at all because of the law of inheritance. All right, so verse 16, it says, so the prayers of them both were heard before the majesty of the great God, great God. So notice the prayers of them both was heard and the great God sent an angel to complete a mission, which we will find out what was the mission. Verse 17, all right, it says, and Raphael, which later we'll learn a uh, Azariah as well, was sent to heal them both. Now, Raphael actually means healer of God. And I think I talked about this in um, a documentary, Apocrypha on Trial, too. But anyway, it says that is to scale away the whiteness of Tobit's eyes. Now, this is Tobias' daddy. And to give Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, for a wife to who? Tobias, the son of Tobit. And what else? And to bind his motives, the evil spirit, because she belonged to Tobias by what? By right of inheritance. Wow. Sounds like Numbers 27, Numbers 36. This was a different type of marriage. So anytime you see anybody in these camps or anybody who's trying to use Tobin dealing with this man, brother, let's get the understanding. This is dealing with the rights of inheritance. Yes, this marriage was just a little different. A little different. That's why he had to marry somebody of his father's tribe. Because of the rights of inheritance. That's what this is for. Numbers 27, Numbers 36. I'm going to keep saying that. All right. Then it said the self same time came Tobit home and entered to his house. And Sarah, the daughter of Raguel, came down for the upper room or chamber. Chamber comes from the Hebrew word Kader which means room. That's what chamber means. That's all it means. All right? So anytime you see that word chamber, you see people, uh, uh, they use the word like bed chamber, etc. Chamber just means room. I'll give an example. Uh, what's that? Our judges. Chapter 15 real quick. It says, but it came to pass within a while after in the time of wheat harvest that Samson visited his wife with the kid or goat. And he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber. But the father would not suffer her, I'm allowing to go in. And the father said, I verily thought that you utterly hated her. I thought you hated her. You didn't want her. Therefore, I gave her to your friend, your homeboy, your companion. Is not a younger sister prettier than she? Or don't she look better? Take her, I pray, thee, instead of her. Man, that was cut, though. <laughs> but let's go back to, um, here we go. he which has the root word, Kader, right there. Chamber. Kader. Strong's age 2315. Kader. Kader. Now, let's click on that real quick. Uh, for those of you who are new, yes, I definitely read biblical Hebrew as well, as you see. Um... Chamber it just means room. That's all I mean. Just a room. All right. So when you saw I'm going to my room, you're going into your cheder, your room. All right. 
that's basically what it is. All right. So that being said, according to this scripture here, this passage here. All right. Now we have what? This angel Raphael came to do what? He came to heal both of them by scaling away the whiteness of Tobiah, um, Tobit's, um, Tobit, aka Tobiah's father's eyes. All right. He came to give uh, Sarah, which is Reguel's daughter, Reguel and Edna's daughter, to Tobit, son, whose name is Tobias. Third thing, um, Tobiah and Asmodeus, the evil spirit. All right. And then uh, number four, uh, because of the law of Moses, she belonged to Tobit's son, Tobias, simply by the rights of inheritance. All right. So, look, take a wife from your kindred, meaning from your tribe, which is of the tribe of Nephali, which we also will learn later again as we progress through the story of this arranged marriage between this angel. Yes, they were in fact cousins. And of course, um... The dad has some money that he left with a man named Gababel. That was another thing that the angel left with him, uh, Tobias, and they were also going to get that money as well. So that was so those were basically the um the five things that the angel Azariah, um, A.K. Raphael came to do. He had a mission to complete, obviously. So now we're in Tobit, the four chapters we finna deal with. And Tobit, who was the father of Tobias, right? Father of Tobias. All right, is about to give his son commands before he dies. This is the context of what is going on in the story. Okay? Tobit, chapter 1, verse... I'm going to chapter 4, verse 1. All right? Let's go ahead and get that. So it says... Chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And that day Tobit remembered the money which he had given to Gababel and Rages of Media. Media. This is what I was telling you about the money. All right? So this was the other thing that he had to do. Um, the angel, which we'll learn later. And he said within himself, or like to himself, I have wished for death. Wherefore do I not call for my son Tobias that I may signify to him of the money before I die? All right? Tobias is the one that married Sarah of Raguel, Edna's and uh, Raguel's daughter. Okay? So, verse 3, which reads, it says, And when he had called him, he said, My son, when I am dead, bury me and despise not or show respect to your mother but honor her all the days of your life and do that which uh which shall please her and grieve her not like don't worry her all right um verse four says remember my son that she saw many dangers for you when you was in her womb. And when she is dead, bury her by me in one grave. So in other words, look, son, remember she risked her life to bring you into this world. She seen many dangerous things when she was pregnant. So try to make her happy and, and never do anything that would worry her. Remember, remember this, you know what I'm saying? That's what he's telling him before he was dying. Verse five. All right, so it says, my son. Now, remember, this is Toby speaking to his son, all right? So when people try to use Toby 4 and 12, like, yo, you do know this was him speaking to his son, him speaking to his son at that. That's the context of what's happening before he dies. So even when y'all try to twist Toby 4 and 12, like, yo, this was a, a conversation between a father and a son, a father and a son. So, verse 5, it says, My son, be mindful of the Lord our God all your days, and let not your will be set to sin, 
or to transgress his commandments. Do it rightly all your life long and follow not the ways of unrighteousness, meaning never get involved in sin and even evil. All right? Verse 6, which reads, For if you deal truly, meaning honestly, if you move in honest, of course, you being truthful, you being real, <laughs> as we said today, you 100, it says your doing shall prosperously succeed to you and to all that live justly. In other words, you're going to succeed in anything that you do, son. I just need you to be 100 at all times. All right, that's what I need you to do, son. Verse seven, give alms, which is charity, of your substance. And when you give alms, let not your eye be envious. Neither turn your face from any poor and the face of God, which shall be turned away from thee. Hmm, sounds familiar, right? Those who understand the Torah know. He was basically teaching him about the law that's written in Deuteronomy 15, verse 7 through 11. About giving to the poor, not hardening your heart. And, um, and, um, your eye be evil against your poor brother, as it states in uh, verse 9 in um, Deuteronomy chapter 15. So Deuteronomy 15 and 9. I believe it's the ninth verse. Um, you can check and see on your own time. That'd be your homework. So, which brings me to verse 8. Told before and 8. Remember, this is a father speaking to a son. He says, if you have abundance, give alms accordingly. So according to what you have. He says, if you have but a little, be not afraid to give to that little. All right? He says, for you lay up a good treasure for yourself against the day of necessity, meaning during hard times, you will receive reward, reward during those uh, them times where you may need it. Man, passing your chips in. <laughs> Verse 10, it says, it says, um, because that alms do deliver or keep you from, from death and suffer it not or allow not to come into darkness or keep you from going into darkness. Why would he say this though? Now, if you've read the entire book of Tobit, you learn later. This is what Tobit said to his son in chapter 14. Matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Tobit 14, I think it's even Tobit 14 and 10. So that was Tobit 4 and 10, Tobit 14 and 10. Let's see. Yes, this is it right here. Aha, went right to it. It says, and bury me decently and your mother with me. But tarry await, no longer at Nineveh. Remember, my son, how Ammon handled Archaearchus that brought him up and how of light he brought him into darkness he brought him into darkness and how he rewarded him again it archie yeah um yeah um um well oh yeah a chiarchus i probably butchered that name was saved but the other had his reward but he went down into darkness hmm sounds like toby 4 and 10 Manasseh gave alms and escaped the snares of the traps of death, which they had set before him. But Ammon fell into the snare and perished. Isn't that something? That's what that sounds like there. That was wisdom that he was giving him based on something that had already happened. That's why he told him that. Now, remember, according to um, uh, chapter one, if you go, uh, if you go to chapter one, uh, chapter one and uh, 21, I think it's 21 about this man. It says, and there passed not five and 50 days before two of his sons killed him and they fled into the mountains of Ararat. And... Sarkadonis, which is Sardon the second in history, when you learn our world history, uh, his son reigned in his steed, who appointed over his father's accounts and over all his affairs. 
uh, Arkea, uh, Arkea Russ, <laughs> my brother, Ananil's son. All right. So we see that they were related. All right. Now, what we read in chapter 14 and 10, that sounds a lot like what we read in Toby 4 and 10. All right. Let's go back. All right. So we're moving on to the next verse, actually. All right. Verse 11, which reads, for alms is a good gift unto all that give in the sight of most of the most high. Now, for those of you familiar with the Bible, this sounds a lot like Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, and Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach in the Apocrypha. If you read chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. That's what this sounds like. All right? And of course, the famous verse here. Beware of all prostitutes, a whore of my son, and and most importantly, a manly, take a wife of the offspring of your ancestors, and take not a harlot to wife, which is not of your father's tribe. Why is that? Because he had to marry one of his father's tribe, because he was the only one left that could do it, which we'll learn later. All right. It says, for we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, how our ancestors, talking about Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, from the beginning, even that they all marry wives of their own family or kindred and will bless in their children and their seed shall inherit the land. Now, therefore, my son, this is what he's saying to his son. is a conversation between a father and son. Not your daddy. His daddy. Now, therefore, my son, love your brother and despise not in your heart your brethren, the sons and daughters of your people, and not taking a wife of them. Don't be too prideful in doing that. Taking a wife of your own relative is what he's saying. He says, For pride is destruction and much trouble, and in lewdness is decay and great want. For lewdness is the mother of famine. Hmm. Now, you know what? I'm going to give you another snippet of what the angel told Tobias. I mean, told Tobit, um, Tobit's son, Tobias, yeah. Um, concerning what his father said here when dealing with this Tobit 4 and 12. Chapter 6, and is it 5th? 15, I want to say 15. All right, 15. Tobit 6 and 15. Now, remember, we learned earlier in Tobit 4 and 12 what he told him to do. Right? Look at this. It says, Then the angel said unto him, Do you not remember the precepts, mean the commandments? which your father gave you. Now remember, Tobit gave his son commandments before his death in chapter four. And what did he say? Let's continue. He said that you should marry a wife of your own kindred. Well, for hear me, O my brother, for she shall be given thee to wife. Mm. So Tobit knew and understood what it was before his death. The angel did too. She shall be given to thee to wife, Thomas Sarah. And may no reckoning of the evil spirit for this same night, she shall be given marriage. So you see this, even the angel knew what Tobias was speaking about when he told him this, which is why Tobias ended up marrying his kindred, AKA his relative, AKA cousin. Now look, wait a minute. Let's deal with something here. So that word kindred is the um the Hebrew word uh moledet, or some would say moledeth with the T H. All right, that's your relative. Matter of fact, let's get some examples of that real quick. Uh Genesis 12 and 1. 
All right. Genesis 12 and 1. I'm going to give you a second to get that, ladies and gents. Matter of fact, I'm going to pull it from here. Boom. We're going to go to... Uh, one second. Book of Genesis, chapter 12. Verse 1. It says, Now... The Lord had said unto Abram. Now remember, Abram's name was changed to Abraham. For you new people in Genesis chapter um, 17, verse 5. All right. So just in case of any new people, Abraham's name was changed to Abraham. All right. Now, that being said, it says, Now the Lord has said to Abram, Get thee out of your country and from who your kindred your kindred that's what he said right there and then it says and from your father's house unto a land that i will show thee now let's look at the good news bible gnb good news bible let's see what it says there the lord said unto abram leave your country your relatives i go your kinsmen and your father's home and go into the land that i'm going to show you Look at that. Matter of fact, speaking of Abram, a.k.a. Abraham, remember 17 verse 5, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham, because I'm making your ancestors many nations. Yeah. So there you go. So 24, verse 1 through 3, it says, Abraham was now very old, and the Lord had blessed him in everything he did. It's the good news version. And he said unto his oldest servant, who was in charge of all that he had, place your hand between my thighs and make a vow, meaning an oath, a promise. I want you to make a vow in the name of the Lord, the God of heaven and earth, that you will not choose a wife for my son from, from the people of, I mean, people here in Canaan. You must go back to the country where I was born and get a wife for my son Isaac among who? My relatives. Among my relatives. Let's see what the KJV says in verse 4. It says, but go into a country and go to my kindred. Right there. Kindred is your relatives, your family, your lineage. All right? That's what that means. Your lineage. Let's look at uh, Genesis 31 and 3. Genesis 31. I'm starting one. It says, and he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob have taken away all that was our father's of, um, was our father's and of that which was our father's hath, he have gotten all his glory. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban and said, behold, it was not toward him as before. Like, dang, he, he ain't dealing with me like he was before. Nah, the way he was looking. It says, and the Lord said to Jacob, return into the land of your fathers and to your kindred, and I will, what, be with thee. So let's deal with that. Good news, Bible right there. Your relatives. Right there. Moladet. A moladet in Hebrew. Kindred. Look at that. Moladet. As I told you earlier, some would say moladet. Nativity, I mean, place of birth, native country, family. That's what it is right there. Family, kindred, native. That's what that is. Your family, your people. Has a root word, your lied. Matter of fact, let me deal with that. Your lied. Boom. Your lied. To be gat. All right. Dealing with those of your family, all right? So, your lineage, your family, all right? Matter of fact, let's grab Leviticus 18, verse 11, uh, dealing with the unlawful sexual relations, all right? There are people in your family you can't deal with, biblically. This is the nakedness of your father's wife, daughter begotten of her father. She is your sister, Yuck. You shall not uncover her nakedness. That word begotten there. That's the same word right there. Moladet. Same thing. See that? 
So it says, don't have, in other words, sexual relation with your father's wife, daughter of your father. Why? Because that's your sister. And today you call her like what? A stepsister. All right? So this is your kindred. And we know that Leviticus 18, Leviticus 20, speaks on the kindred in which you are not to take on. And cousins, believe it or not, biblically speaking, in the biblical sense, is not off that list. It's not. Biblically speaking, it's not. So Kendrick is one of your relatives. And this is what Tobit was telling him to do. That's why Tobit, let me go back. Let me show you real quick. All right. Real quick. So that's why Tobit, in the book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 13, when it says, Now, therefore, my son, love your brethren, despise not in your heart, meaning in your mind, your brethren, the sons and daughters of your people, and not taking a wife of them. So don't be so prideful and not don't be so prideful in not taking them a wife from one of them, in other words. Then he says, For in pride is destruction. That sounds like Proverbs 16, verse 18. All right? That's what that is. That's what that's talking about. All right? So, told before in one. Now, remember um, the money that he talked about, verse one and two, right? Remember we had talked about this right here? So, we get that money from uh, uh, Gabriel. Remember that? That money, of course, leads us into chapter five. Go to chapter five real quick. All right, verse one, it says, Tobi uh, Tobias then answered and said, Father, I will do all the things which you have commanded me. Verse two, but how can I receive the money seeing I know him not? Then he gave him the handwriting and said to him, seek thee a man which may go with thee. While I yet live, meanwhile I'm alive, and I will give him wages and go and receive the money. Verse four. Therefore, when he when he went to seek a man, he found Raphael, that was an angel. That was an angel, right here as we see. Now remember, this is that angel that the great God sent him to marry off Raguel's daughter Sarah. So look at how the Most High allowed them to cross paths. Verse 5. Remember, he was an angel, but he said, but he knew not. Meaning he knew, he didn't know that he was, he didn't know that uh, Raphael, aka Azariah, was an angel. And said unto him, can you go with me to uh, Rages? And knowest thou those places well? Like, do you know those places well? This also reminds me of, uh, what's that, uh, Hebrew, just real quick. Hebrews 13 in verse 2 when it says let brotherly love continue be not forgetful to entertain strangers but there are some that have entertained strangers uh, strangers unaware like Tobias who didn't know that Raphael was an angel he didn't know that alright verse 6 it's Toby 5 and 6 it says to whom the angel said I will go with thee and I know the way well. I mean, I know this place very well. For I have lodged with our brothers, Gabael. Now, remember Gabael, y'all, was the man who Tobias' dad gave that money to. All right. Verse 7. Then Tobias said unto him, tarry for me, now wait for me till I tell my father. Like, look, hey, wait right here and let me go tell my dad, you know, you're going to roll with me. Verse 8. Which reads, then he said unto him, Go and tarry not. I mean, it says, So he went in and said to his father, Behold, I have found one which will go with me. Then he said, Call him unto me. That's what the daddy's saying. Call him unto me that I may know what, what tribe he is and whether he be a trusty man to go with you. All right? Verse 9. So he called him in and they saluted one another. Shalom, shalom. You know what I'm saying? Shalom, you know how y'all be. <laughs> Uh, verse 10 
Then Toby said to him, brother, show me of what tribe and family you are. That's what he asked him. All right. Verse 11. To whom he said, doest thou seek? And this is what uh, Raphael asked him. Do you seek for a tribe or family or a higher man to go with your son? Like, wh wh which one you want? Which one's more important to you? Right? <laughs> then Toby said unto him, I would know, brother, your kindred and name. Now, there is another example of what kindred, uh, I'm sorry, um, this is another example of what kindred is. He wanted to know who was his relatives and their names. See that? I want to know who your relatives, your kindred. See that? There's another clue to your Tobit 4 and 12. The word kindred is there. That's relatives. All right? Verse 12. Then he said, I am Azarias, the son of Ananias, the great, uh, yeah, the great, and of your brethren. All right. So, uh, verse 13. Then Toby said, you are welcome, brother. Be not now angry with me because I have inquired to know your tribe and your family or kindred. For you are my brother of an honest and good stock. For I know Ananias and, Jan um, and Jonathan's sons of that great Samias, as we went together to Jerusalem to worship and offered a sacrifice, the firstborn and the tents of the fruits, and they were not seduced with the error of our brethren. My brethren, thou art of a good stock. Like you come from a good bloodline there. Come from a good bloodline there, is what he's saying there. So, we definitely got to follow along and definitely got to understand what is going on. All right? Because one of the things I want to do in this one, because I'm going to move to chapter six, and what I'm going to do is I want to put the clip of what I taught back in 2015 in Tobit, the sixth chapter. All right? Reason being is because when you look uh, for people... Um, who don't deal with the apocrypha one of their arguments is well we don't really deal with it because it wasn't godly inspired and tobit the sixth chapter teaches witchcraft remember we were talking about that remember that let me uh, pull it up real quick let me pull it up all righty all right let me show you right here remember this from earlier right here I uh, just right here when you go to King James Bible slash Apocrypha dash books says many claim that the Apocrypha should never been included in the first place raising doubt about its validity meaning how valid it is and believing it was not God inspired for instance a reference about magic seems inconsistent with the rest of the Bible, is what they say. As if things like parting the Red Sea wouldn't be considered like magic or making a donkey talk in Numbers 22 or having a man come from out of the ground or um, the Israelites crossing through on dry ground or if you believe in the New Testament, Christ feeding 5,000 people um, with a loaf of bread. Um, you name it, him raising Lazarus from the dead, etc. Um, it's so many things, so many miracles in the Bible and wonders and signs that you'd be like, yo, that would be what you call today magic. So, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and play the clip. I think this is gonna be good. Um, you get to see me going into this right here. Hold on one second. <laughs> Yes, so you get to see me going into this here, and um, you get to see what I said. I even pulled a reference uh, from earlier. There's even more information out today um, dealing with the gall of uh, the liver of fish or whatnot. And uh, you can even see today that there is even more information that even came out on um, 
Matter of fact, I don't want to give it away now, but you'll just see. And hopefully you all will look at this information and look this up or whatnot. Um, also, um, for those of you who believe in the missing books, I go into uh, the Testament of Solomon as well. The Testament of Solomon. All right. Uh, chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, uh, dealing with Asmodeus or Asmodeus as well. Um, and how he's thwarted or bound. I'll talk about that. Um, so we're going to go ahead and deal with this. Uh, Tobit, the sixth chapter. Definitely sit there and pay attention. Watch and listen with an open mind. Look into the information. And again, have an open mind. Tobit, the sixth chapter. Okay. So now, what I want to get into, um, I'll be reading from... Different version of the Apocrypha, same book, but it's a different version. Um, it's from the New Oxford Annotated Bible, okay? As you can see right here. Now, if you have this, of course, you can turn to Tobit chapter 6, and it also has uh, notes as well, like annotations and stuff, okay? Now, I'm going to read from Tobit, the sixth chapter, all right? And again, if you know history, this will all make sense. Okay, that's one of the things that as the people do, we don't really, you know, study history really well. Okay, Tobit chapter 6 and 1. The young man went out and the angel went with him and the dog came out with him and went along with them. So they both uh, journeyed along. So they're on a journey, as you see. All right, they're traveling. And when the first night overtook them, they camped by the Tigris River. All right, so now they're at the Tigris River. The territory uh, around this time was uh, the Syrian territory. Okay. Now, so keep in mind, about the Tigris River, right? Okay. Then it says in verse 3, the young man went down to wash his feet in the Tigris River. All right. Suddenly, a large fish leaped up from the water and tried to swallow up the young man's foot. But he cried out. But the, and this is verse 4. But the angel said to the young man, catch hold of the fish and hang on to it. So the young man uh, grabs the fish and drew it up on the land. The angel said to him, cut open the fish and take out its gall, heart, and liver. Keep them with you, but throw away the intestines. For its gall, heart, and liver are useful as medicine. So this was useful as medicine, not witchcraft, not magic. All right. And we're going to and I'm going somewhere with this. But listen with an open mind. It says, verse 6, So after cutting open the fish, the young man gathered together the gall, heart, and liver, and he then, uh, then he roasted and ate some of the fish and kept some to be salted. The, uh, the two continued on their way together until they were near Media. Then the young man questioned the angel and said to him, Brother Azariah, or who? Raphael. Uh, what uh, medical value is there in the fish heart and liver and of the gall and in the gall? And he replied, as for the fish heart and liver, you must burn them to make a smoke in the presence of a man or woman afflicted by a demon or evil spirit. And every affliction will flee away and never remain with that person any longer. As for the gall, anoint thy person's eyes where white films have appeared on them blow up on them and white films and the eyes will be healed okay so again um yeah verse 10 when he entered media and already was approaching uh Ebatana, Raphael said to the young man brother tobias here i am he answered then Raphael said unto him we must stay this night in the home of Rigu uh, riguel he is your relative and he has a daughter named Sarah. All right. So now. In the notes, in this very thing, it has something here that I'm already familiar with. So as I was reading this, of course, I was familiar with this already for verse. Um, when you look at Toba chapter six, uh, it gives the notes for, you know, each verse or whatnot. And uh, one of the things I want to read is you'll see what I'm reading down here. Okay, and this is from Oxford, right? 
those notes down there as you can see I highlighted it down there okay down here see that this is what I'll be reading this is what it says Raphael's instructions are consistent with ancient medical text and those who know history know exactly where I'm going with this okay so what the angel told him to do says it's consistent with what people was doing in the ancient world according to the records all right um that it says uh raphael's instructions are consistent with ancient medical texts to provide instructions for the use of the fish organs and then for verse six of course it says no reference is made to the angel consuming food verse eight it's uh this is the notes for verse eight it says to make a smoke or to um fumigate was a standard means for healing and ex uh, exercising demons it says one suspects the smell yeah one suspects the smell of a weak old fish guts would easily drive away a demon or an evil spirit then for verse 9 of course it said anointing a person's eyes with fish gall is prescribed for cursing blindness in ancient Assyrian and Egyptian medical medical text it did this for healing medicine which some of you say oh magic but not knowing that in the ancient world this is how they did this stuff this is how they did this so again what the angel told him to do was something that people in the ancient world knew and understood very well this wasn't what you call magic he didn't tell him to get on a Ouija board worship another god or anything like that all he did was did his job as healing this brother okay so i want i want to um challenge you all i want you to look into that see that does this really fit did this really happen in the ancient world again i stated you have to know history all right so in the ancient world they actually done this so i challenge you to look into this all right and what i'll do is uh, I'll, I'll see if i can um I'll give you something that may intrigue you and in that to get you to go into actually doing it. So that would be a challenge uh, for you all to see. Did they really do this in the ancient world? Okay. So various cultures did it. It wasn't just the Assyrians and Egyptians. You had the Babylonians and the Greeks did it as well. And, and some of the Romans did too as well. But they didn't always do um, a fish. They did other animals as well. Okay. So, but I want you to look into this because basically what the angel told them is not so far-fetched what they did in the ancient world all right so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pull something up and let you all take a look at that shalom 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 you listen to the voice of judah moshe in israel and i found a great site you know some information that you can kind of start um this website that i'm at is www.ncbi.nlm.nih.com gov now ncbi stands for the national center for biotechnology information now again as i said of course you have to know history to fully understand the bible is written in an ancient vibration not a 2015 vibration okay so um and I wanted to be fair, again, I said I was going to look at things from both sides. I want to show you things not just from the culture, from the biblical standpoint, but also from other people's standpoints as well. Now, we're going to look at a comment, all right, that I just pulled up right here. Okay, so um, this is my first time reading it with you all. We're just going to kind of freestyle it. All right, evidently this is a, a brother. He's telling a story when he was a youngster. He says, when I was eight years old, my father became ill, malnourished, and suffered from night blindness. Night blindness. He could not see to walk between rooms in our house or go to the mosque for prayer without help. So obviously his brother was a, uh, a Muslim. It says, I used to, le uh, to lead him to uh, and from, their, uh, from the mosque. He, however, continued to enjoy reading his books at night next to a uh, kerosene lamp okay and it says from sunset until bedtime he stayed alone quietly in his room reading except for a few minutes of prayers at night he loved his books kind of remind me myself <laughs> he loved his books 
and had the biggest collections of books in the country then. Why do people get night blindness? It's a question. All right. So he's, I guess he's asking uh, the people at this website. All right. Which is, uh, of course, um, the uh, National Center for Biotechnology Information. OK, so I'm guessing that this is his question that he wanted to ask. Why do people get night blindness? Nobody knew an R.A.K. then. All right. Then it says Iraq. Then it says. We had no medical doctors or pharmacies in the country. We had only ancient traditional medicine. Ancient tra traditional medicine, hmm, practiced by some illiterate elderly. So my father sought therapeutic advice from one such elderly. His prescription, this elder, was fish liver oil extracted by cooking on charcoal to be rubbed inside the eyes with a special uh, stylet every night for one week. A neighboring fisherman, a friend of my father, supplied us after sunset with either a large fish liver or a whole fish. My mother would prepare the charcoal after sunset prayer and put the liver over it. While my sister and I sat with our father watching the therapeutic preparation. When the liver was cooked and the oil started seeping out, my mother would see insert a silver stylet into the liver and then give to my father, who waited for it to cool down. My father then applied the stylet uh, saturated with fish liver oil flat over the inside of the eye. He would then close his eyelid on it while pulling it out. After that, he would eat barbecue liver. And though it was not part of the prescription, after a few days, he improved. And one week, he regained his night vision completely. Now, this sounds uh, a lot like what we read in the book of Tobit. You see that? What was there magic going on? No, this was a prescription to heal him. So they did this in the ancient world. In fact, long before Tobit came on the scene, they've been doing this. You don't think the angel had knowledge of that too? So it obviously it was nothing wrong with it. So understand, when you know history, when you're reading a lot of things, especially in the Bible, it's not far fetched because this is what they did in the ancient world. When there were no doctors around. So clearly, this would make a lot of sense on why the angel told Tobit to do this. Did he tell him to go worship another god or anything like that? No. All he did was heal him and got rid of a demon. And they did this in the ancient world. All right. Now. Down here, it says history of night blindness and therapy, because remember, he wanted to get the whiteness out of his eyes as well. It says in the history of treating night uh, blindness in the ancient Egyptian and Babylonians, the Greeks and many other cultures after them used animal liver as treatment. Like, as I told you, like what we did in Rack. So obviously, who, uh, whoever this person is talking, he knows history. He says in Egyptian papyrus, Ebers, 1500 B.C., right? It's, and this is before Tobit. It says they record uh, they recommended cures was roasted ox liver press applied typical to the eye. Another ancient gyp of papyrus. All right. Kahan, which is 1000, uh, yeah, uh, 1825 B.C., a gynecological uh, uh, treatise mentioned instructions for a woman cannot see to eat raw liver of an ass or what you know, the donkey. The Assyrian medical text, which is 700 B.C., uh, prescribed night blindness that though it was uh, caused by rays of the moon or cured by application of the liver to the eyes they did not put the liver itself uh, in the eye but use uh, the extracted oil You'll probably enjoy eating the cooked liver so basically I'm just trying to get you to see and then like when you look uh, in Tobit the sixth chapter right let's not forget they was at the Tigris River now again uh, the Assyrian territory, all right, from the uh, first century BC to the late century, um, uh, to the uh, 
to the late third century BC. Um, you know, it's centered on the uh, the Upper Tigris River, which would make sense. So this was an ancient custom as well. Does this mean that they were doing witchcraft because they were healing themselves? Were no doctors or anything around? Think about that for a second. So basically what we read is a lot like what was going on in Tobit, which makes a lot more sense, especially when you know history. But don't take my word, just look into it for yourself. Because again, when you look in Tobit 3, I'm in mean, Tobit chapter 6, and verse 5 it says, So the young man did as the angel commanded him, and when they had roasted the fish, they did eat it. That sounds like a lot with um what we just read on this website, right? They wanted to enjoy the fruits of their labor, of course. They ate it. See that? And they drew near Edvertain. Then the young man said to the angel, Brother Azarias, to what use is the heart, right? What is his purpose or medical purpose? And the liver and gall of fish. You see that? So understand, he was asking him a question and he told him. Verse seven, and he said unto him, to touching the heart and concerning the heart and the liver, if a devil or an evil spirit trouble any, we must take a smoke thereof before uh, the man or the woman and the party shall be no more vexed, right? That would explain the charcoal when he said my mother would prepare the charcoal after sunset, after sunset prayer and put liver over it. While my sister sat with our father. Right. So it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And as we read in the Testament of Solomon, it talked about the charcoal as well. It's the same exact thing. We've been making something out of nothing. It's the same thing. So back in this Testament of Solomon, you know, chapter five. All right. Verse nine. Again, it says, Then I endured him by the name of the Lord Sabaoth, as Modius, as Modeus, fear the Most High, and tell me by which angel are you thwarted, meaning are you bound? The demon said, Raphael, which is Azarias. It was read in Tobit. All right. It says, The one who stands before the Most High, but also right a liver and gall of fish smoking on coals of charcoal drives me away drives them away and it sounds like what what we were just reading the brother was saying that's what he was doing that's what his mom did same thing same thing so it's an ancient remedy but it also drives demons away All right, so that was a clip back in that was recorded back in 2015. That was released uh, in 2016. We're gonna move on to the next verse because hey, we in the last stretch. We moving at home. Remember YouTube.com/slash Judy the Shooter. Definitely like, share, and subscribe, ladies and gents. Don't forget to share this uh, video and don't forget to share the channel with other people. Once again, Who's the Jews is a documentary that will be coming. Uh, I mean, part two is a documentary that will be coming out sooner than later. Lord's willing, ladies and gents. So let's go ahead and keep it moving. So we still in Tobit the sixth chapter. Well, as I said, we back in Tobit six. All right, we just got done looking at the Testament of Solomon chapter five, uh, verse nine and 10, of course. Now, so this is Tobit six again. All right, in verse nine, it says, and when they came near Rages, verse 10, the angel said to the young man, brother, today we shall lodge with Raguel, who is who? Your cousin, your cousin, right there, who is your cousin. Remember, they were the same kindred. So he says, who is your cousin? Now pay attention. L listen to what the angel told him. He also have only one daughter named Sarah, I will speak for her that she may be given thee for a wife. Now, guys, remember I told you all earlier dealing with the law of Moses that is outlined in Numbers 27 and Numbers chapter 36, dealing with the case if a man died and then had no sons, inheritance was passed down to his daughter. 
all right? And dealing with the rights of inheritance. Remember earlier I went to Toby 3 and 15. Remember that? Uh, the Toby 3 and 15, let me grab that real quick. Toby 3, 15. Remember this earlier? When it says, um, when, it, when, she, uh, when, when Sarah said, I have never polluted my name, nor the name of my father in the land of my captivity. Pay attention. She said, I am the only daughter of my father. Neither have any, I mean, neither have he any child to be his heir or inheritor. Neither any near kinsman or kindred, family, relatives, nor any son of his ally to whom I may keep myself for a wife. Remember that? Remember I told you, Sarah, dad, Reguel had no sons, no near kin, no one but her left of his tribe. Remember I showed you earlier the law of Moses that states if a man died, didn't have no sons, his inheritance was then passed down to his daughter. Remember that earlier? Real quick. Numbers 27, verse 8. Remember that? And if his father have no brother, then you should uh, give his inheritance unto his, uh, to his kinsmen. Remember, she, she didn't have that. I mean, her, her dad didn't have that. That is next to his family. He shall possess it and he shall be unto the children of Israel. Statue of judgment as the Lord commanded. Remember, he didn't have that. It was nobody else but the daughter. But the daughter. See that? Remember verse 9, I mean, um, verse 8 as well. It says, and you, uh, and you shall speak to the children of Israel, so if a man died, had no sons, then you should cause the inheritance to pass down to his daughter. This, of course, is the case. This is the case. Of course, we already know about the daughters of Zeolophat of the tribe of Nasser, tribe of Joseph. So you know what I'm saying is a fact. This is the case of Sarah's dad, according to Toby 3 and 15, when she said, I, what she say? Uh, when she said, I am the only daughter of my father, neither have he any child to be his heir, neither any near kinsman nor any son of his alive to whom I may have myself the wife. So on her dad's side, there was no one left, just her. This means by law, by rights of inheritance, she has to marry somebody of her father's tribe according to Numbers 36, as I've shown you all earlier. As I've shown you all earlier, all right? So if you don't remember, just go back and rewind. Numbers 36, make it your homework. So let's go back to chapter six real quick. All right, chapter six, and we're going to start in verse 11. All right. So verse 11, it says, but to thee do the right of her appertain, seeing you only are of her kindred, family, relative, etc." Verse 12, what says what? Verse 12 says, it says, um, and the maid, Tell my Sarah, it's fair and wise. And now therefore hear me and I will speak to a father and we will return from rages. We will celebrate the marriage for I know that Raguel cannot, cannot marry her I mean, to another or to someone else according to law of Moses. That's number 27, number 36. I'm going to keep saying it. But he shall be guilty of death because the right of what? Inheritance. Do it appertain to thee and to any other. So, Again, right here we see this is a marriage was a special case dealing with the rights of inheritance. They was cousins of the same tribe, Tobias and Sarah. Are they? So here we go. So one is the only son of his father and Sarah is the only daughter of the other father, which means by rights of inheritance, they had to marry. Verse 13. Hopefully you all understand. If not, go back and rewatch this again. Verse 13, it says, Then the young man answered the angel, I have heard, Brother Azariah, or Raphael, that, it, uh, that this maid have been given to seven men who all died in the marriage chamber. Now pay attention to what Tobias said here. Um, look at what he said. He says, And now I am the only son of my father. I am the only son of my father. I am the only son of of my father so you see that she was the only daughter and he was the only son this was a special case this is what i told you 
This means they have to get married according to the law. So he says, I'm the only son of my father. And I'm afraid lest if I go into her, I die. As all the others before, in other words. For a wicked spirit love her, was her nobody but those which come unto her. Wherefore, I also fear lest I die. And bring my father's and my mother's life because of me to the grave with sorrow. Pay attention. Let's find out why. It says what? But they have no other son to bury them. Look at that. So they were the only ones left. Verse 15. Then the angel said unto him, Do thou not remember the commandments or precepts which your father gave thee that thou should marry a wife of your own relatives, family, kindred? Yeah, that's what Toby 4 and 12 is talking about. He says, Wherefore, hear me, your brother, but she shall be given to thee to wife. Make no reckoning of the evil spirit, for this same night she shall be given in marriage. Don't that sound like Tobit 4 and 12? Once again, ladies and gents, right here. Don't that sound like Tobit 4 and 12? Beware of all whoredom of prostitution, my son. And most importantly, achievely take a wife of the seed of your ancestors. And take not a harlot or a strange wife to wife, which is not of your father's tribe, not of your father's tribe. What tribe is the, the father from? Nephthali. Nephthali was not of your father's tribe. For we are the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember, my son, that our fathers are answers from the beginning, even that they all marry wives of their own kindred or their own family, their own relatives. Their own relatives. That's what he's saying right there. And we're blessed in the children and the seed shall inherit the land. Verse 14, I mean, verse 13, the next verse, which says what? Now, therefore, my son, love your brother and despise not in your heart thy brother, the sons and daughters of your people, and not taking a wife of them. Don't be too prideful. That's why I said for pride is destruction. Now, why did he say this? Look, matter of fact, look, in the Good News Testament, right here, same thing. Remember this? Son, be on guard against prostitutes or beware of all whoredom. Above all, or when he said uh, chiefly, which is mainly, most importantly, marry a woman of our tribe because we are the descendants of the prophets. Do not marry the one who's not related to us. Remember that Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, our earliest ancestors, all married relatives. It says, God blessed them with children and so that their descendants will inherit the land of Israel. So be loyal to your own relatives and don't be too proud to marry one of them. Who? Your own relatives is what he was saying there. Look at this real quick. Chapter one. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, um, that being said, it says, and I am Tobit. This is the story of my life. My father was Tobiel. My grandfather was Aniel. And the and my great-grandfather was Aduel. Aduel's father was Gabael, the one who had the money. His grandfather was Raphael. And his great-grandfather was Raguel, who belonged to the clan or the family of Asiel. A part of who? The tribe of Nephali. That's the tribe that Tobit was from. The tribe of Nephali. Keep that in mind. That's the tribe that Sarah is also from as well. All right. As well. So dealing with this Toby 4 and 13, when he was telling, don't be afraid to marry one of your relatives. Why did he say this? Because this man had a son who had to marry the daughter of his tribe. The daughter also had to marry somebody of her father's tribe because it was commanded. They were the tribe of Nathali. Numbers 27, number Numbers 36 say this. It say this. Well, let me just, because it's going to be somebody that's going to ask this question and still ain't going to listen. I go through this all the time for years. It don't change. This is the thing which the Lord commanded the daughter of Zeolophad. Let them marry to whom they think best. Only to the family of the tribe of their father shall they marry. Shall they marry? Shall they marry? 
He told her, don't marry nobody that's not of your father's tribe, which is the tribe of Nathali. All right. So Numbers 27, 1 through 11, Numbers 36, verse 1 through 13. You know this to be true. Now, again, why is this relevant? Because the case of Tobias, who had to marry one of his own kindred or relative or family members of his lineage. Hmm. Yeah. Of this tribe, according to the law of Moses. Got that? So when we look at this verse, notice he would mainly take one from his offspring and it had to be of that tribe. Hopefully you all is getting this. Chapter 6, and now we go to the next verse, verse 16, which says, uh, Tobit 6, 16, it says, and when you shall come into the marriage room or chamber, you shall take the ashes of perfume and shall lay upon them some of the heart and liver of the fish and shall make a smoke with it. We've already learned about this. All right. Historically, biblically. Verse 17, it says, And the devil shall smell it and flee away and never come again anymore. But when you shall come to her, Rise up both of you and pray to God, which is merciful, who will have pity on you or compassion on you and will save you. Fear not, for she is appointed unto you from the beginning, and you shall preserve her, and she shall go with you. Moreover, I suppose, that word suppose meaning assume, thought, or think, I suppose that she will bear the children. Now, when Tobias had heard these things, he loved her. And his heart was affectionately joined or inclined to her, which brings us to chapter seven. We moving on, baby. Oh, yeah. Let's get it. Chapter seven, verse one. It says, now, let me take a sip of my juice real quick. All right. So it says, now, when they came to Agbertain, they came to the house of Raguel and Sarah met them. And after they had saluted one another, shalom, 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 shalom. <laughs> they brought them into the house. Verse two. Then Raguel, um, um, then said Raguel to Edna, his wife. Now remember, this is Sarah's mother. Uh, how long, I mean, I mean, how like is this young man to Tobit, my cousin? Oh, look at that. Look at that. How like is this young man to Tobit, my cousin? My cousin. Told you. Relatives kindreds you see they're related they are kindreds aka kinsmen look at that hmm verse 3 it says and raguel asked them from whence are ye brethren to whom they said we are of the sons of nephali like we both are from the tribe of nephali hmm which are captives of nineveh so they are kinsmen Look at that. Verse 4. Then he said to them, Do you know Tobit, our kinsman? And they said, We know him. Then he said, Is he in good health? Verse 5. And they said, He is both alive and in good health. And Tobias said, He is my father. Oh, they related. Then Raguel leaped up, kissed him, and wept. Look at that. This is why I'm saying they are they are relative this is important that the author had to put these things in here so people like you can understand oh this was the law of moses that he took her after this what he was talking about numbers chapter 27 numbers chapter 36 please don't forget to subscribe to youtube.com slash judah the shooter definitely like share and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications it's going down all right. So, um, verse six, I mean, verse seven. And he blessed him and said unto him, Thou art the son of an honest and good man. But when he had heard that Tobit was blind, he was sorrowful and wept. Now, remember one of the things about it. Remember, we learned earlier in uh, Tobit 3 and uh, 17. Tobit 3 and 17. It says, and Raphael was sent to heal them both. That is to scale away the whiteness of Tobit's eyes. Remember, he was blind or whatnot. So that's what you're reading about right there in chapter seven. All right. So hopefully you understand that. 
All right. Now check this out. You vegans, y'all going to love verse eight. All right. Let's look at verse eight. Y'all going to love this one. It says, and likewise, Edna, his wife and Sarah, his daughter wept. Moreover, they entertained them cheerfully. And after that, what they do? They had killed a ram of the flock. Let's see what they did with that. They set store of meat on the table. Oh, I know y'all vegans love that one. <laughs> I'm just playing. I know y'all hate that. <laughs> but it is what it is. It says, then said Tobias to Raphael, brother Azariah, speak of those things of which you did talk on the way. Like, remember that stuff you were just telling us? Hey, go ahead. Let me, hey, let, tell them what you told me. And let this business be dispatched. And let this business be dispatched. Hmm. This marriage was a business marriage dealing with the rights of inheritance, share of the land. He knew that by law, the law of Moses, he had to marry this girl. He had to. He had no choice according to the law of Moses. All right. You remember the angel said he going to talk to Sarah's daddy. And here he is right here. Remember he said he's going to do that, y'all? It says, so he communed right there. I'm um, communicated the matter of the situation with Raguel. And Raguel said to Tobias, eat, drink, and be merry. So he said, eat that meat and drink. Worlds. Shout out to my brother Mahal. You say that. <laughs> so that being said, he obviously told him, like, look, I know you can't marry her off. You got to marry her according to the law of Moses. So he's telling him the law and telling him what's going on. Telling him the situation. The situation. <laughs> telling him that. So that being said, he's now he's now being updated on what's going on. Look at verse 10. Look at this. Here's another hint. It says in verse 10, it says what? It says, for it is meat or do that you should marry my daughter, but uh, nevertheless, I will declare, I got to tell you something. I got to tell you the truth. He says, I've given my daughter in marriage to seven men who died that night that they came in, unto her. Nevertheless, meaning, but for the present, be married. Like at this present time, look, don't trip, be married. But Tobiah said, I will eat nothing here till we agree and swear to one another. So now Tobias and uh, Raguel is making what? So Tobias, who's Toby's son, who's going to marry his daughter, and Raguel is what? They are promising each other. They are making a covenant, an agreement. That's what they're doing, and this is very important. He says, I ain't going to eat nothing till we what? Agree. Agree means what? A covenant. That's what agreement means, a covenant, a binding agreement. The Hebrew word berit is what that is. That's what it means. I'll give an example. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. It says right here, it says, um, I'm in 32. Here we go. Covenant, berit. Covenant, alliance, pledge between a treaty, league, alliance, covenant making. See that? So, look at this, confederacy, confederate, covenant, league. This is what, y'all? An agreement. That's what this is. An agreement, a binding agreement. That's what that is, berit. All right? So, Dealing with that, um, what we at verse, uh, yeah, 11. No, we're going into verse 12. They, they made the covenant agreement, right? He know the situation, know what's going on. He don't want to let his daddy down. And he know that he got to marry her. And at this point, he loves this woman. Verse 12, it says, Raguel said, then take her from henceforth according to the matter, I mean the custom, for you are what? Her cousin. 
Why would he say that? And she is yours. And the merciful God will give you good success in all things. Keyword, in all things. Now remember that law, Numbers 27, Numbers 36. Hmm. Y'all cousins. Then he called Sarah his daughter, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her to be the wife to Tobiah, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses. Take her after the law of Moses. What is he talking about? What law of Moses? Numbers chapter 27, Numbers chapter 36. They're cousins. She's the only daughter, and he's the only son. And they are both of the tribe of Nephali, and both of them had to marry each other. That's the law of Moses that he's talking about. It says, and lead her away to your father, and he blessed them. And he blessed them. Now, let's see what Raguel did. Mem uh, um, Tobias' father-in-law, or Sarah's daddy. Let's see what he did and what he said to his wife. Because remember, um, um, Tobias said that he ain't going to eat nothing until they agree and swear, meaning promise, meaning swear an oath one to another. Make a league, a covenant, an agreement. That's why I said right here, and and call Edna. This is what the daddy did. And call Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants. Why? Because there was an agreement made right here. Instruments of agreements and sealed it. Meaning he either closed it or he put his family seal on it. Right there. Right there. So this ain't had nothing to do with him going down to the government office and getting a marriage license or a marriage certificate. Has nothing to do with that at all. No matter how you looking at this, this was the father who made an agreement with the son. Right there. This was a special case of dealing with the laws of inheritance, share the land. And as you read through the chapter, I know one of the things that was on that paper was dealing with the inheritance as well. So, that being said, um, verse 11 told us about how Tobias swore and promised to each other, which means they made a binding agreement, covenants. And here it is, Raguel is putting this agreement that they made on paper. And he put his family seal on it, or you can look at that as he closed it up. This is not a case, again, as going down to some courthouse or some government, uh, getting some government uh, certificate or anything like that. This business was between the son-in-law and the father, Tobias and Raguel. Remember, they had to get married anyway, according to the law of Moses and according to what the angel had already mentioned. So they had to get married. This is bigger than some piece of paper. They had to get married. Verse 12. It says, um, matter of fact, hold on, right, real quick. Toby 6 and 12, just in case you forgot. Right there. Toby 6 and 12. And it said, And the maid is fair and wise, and now therefore hear me, and I will speak to her father. And when we return from rages, we will celebrate the marriage. For well, I know that Raguel cannot marry her to another or someone else, according to the law of Moses. Right there. But he shall be get their death because the right of inheritance, the right of inheritance, share the land, do it rather appertain to you or belong to you than to any other. That was a business deal right there. That's what we got there. That's what we got there. And what also had, again, as I said earlier, what also had been on that paper was also that share that land after their death because of what happened in the last chapter. How do we know? Tobit chapter 14 and verse 13, I want to say. It says, um, man, I'm starting 12. It says, and when Anna, his mother was dead, he buried her with his father, but Tobias departed with his wife and children to Agbertain to who? Raguel, the daddy who he made that covenant with, that league with, that agreement with. His father-in-law, 
where he became old with honor and buried his father and mother-in-law honorably. And he what? Inherited, they go to rights of inheritance, their substance and his father, father Tobits. That's what the whole thing was about in Numbers 27, Numbers 36, if a man died, didn't have no sons. Because once they got married, the stuff would have been passed on to who? The husband. The husband. And we see right there, he inherited it. You understand that? Tobit 7. Um, verse 14. And he called Edna, talking about Raguel, um, which is his wife. Um, Reg um, Reguel's wife. Um, he called Edna his wife and took paper and did write instruments of agreements and sealed it. Then they begin to eat. Now remember, when he said they begin to eat, remember back in verse 11, he said, I will eat nothing here to we. Talking about him and the, he remember he talking to who? The daddy. To we agree and swear one to another. Remember he said, I've given my daughter in marriage. He's talking to who? The daddy. The daddy is the one that he made the covenants with, the agreements with. And obviously the share of the land had to been on that. Had to been on that. And then after they came with that agreement, then they were able to eat. Remember, they were already have to marry anyway. He said, if it is me or do that, you should marry my daughter. He already knew that. Verse 16, which says, And Reguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, prepare another room or chamber and bring her in thither. And when she had done as he had bidden her, told her, she brought her thither and she wept and she received the tears of her daughter and said unto her, Be of good comfort, my daughter, the Lord of heaven and earth give thee joy. For this your sorrow be of comfort, my daughter. Just comforting her, you know. Chapter 8, 1 through 3. Let's read 1 through 3. It says, And when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. And as he went, he remembered the words of Raphael, or Azariah the angel, and took the ashes of the perfumes, and put the heart and the liver of fish thereupon, and made a smoke therewith. This, I mean, the smell in which the evil spirit had smelled and fled into the uttermost parts of Egypt, and the angel bound him. Now remember in the Testament of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 9 and 10, remember we learn about this, that that demon would flee to Egypt. We learn about this. Let's go to chapter 9. All right, chapter 9. All right, 1 through 6, which reads, Then Tobias called Raphael and said to him, Brother Azarias, take with thee a servant and two camels and go to rages of media to who? Gabael, and bring me the money and bring him to the wedding. Now remember, this was all the way back in chapter 5, chapter 4. So verse 3, it says, For Raguel has sworn that I shall not depart. But my father counted the days if I tarry long. Like he counting these days, y'all. He would be very sorry. So Raphael went out and lodged with Gabriel and gave him the handwriting, who brought forth the bags which were sealed up and gave them to him. And early in the morning, they went forth both together and came to the wedding, and Tobias blessed his wife. All right? Tobias blessed his wife. Now remember chapter 14. Look at chapter 14, y'all. Right here. Chapter 14. All right? It says, Wherefore, my son, consider what alms doeth, and how the righteous do it deliver. And when he had said these things, he gave up the ghost in the bed, and a hundred and eight and fifty years old, and he buried him honorably. And when Anna, his mother, was dead, he buried her with his father. But Tobias departed with his wife and the children to Agbertain to Reguel, his father-in-law. Verse 13, where he became old with honor, and he buried his father and mother-in-law honorably. And he inherited, their, he inherited their substance. Their substance, look, it means what? Their property, the share of the land. Right there. He inherited that. And his father's Tobit. Now, what was, wait, what a minute. Don't that sound like Numbers 27? 
Don't that sound like number 27, guys? Hmm? Right here. I guess I'll start with, um, remember they were asking this question right here? Why should the name of a father be done away with from among his family? Because he have no son? Give us, uh, give unto us, therefore, a possession among the uh, the brethren of our father. Now, remember, she didn't have that. She didn't have that. That's why it says right here, the daughters of Zeolophatus speak right. You shall sh uh, surely give them a possession of inheritance of their father's brethren, and they shall cause inheritance of the father to pass unto them. See that? Look at that. Same thing. Same thing. Numbers. 36. Remember right here? I'm in verse 4. Matter of fact, I'm starting 3. It says, and if they be married to any of the sons of other tribes, this is why she couldn't marry nobody no other tribe of the children of Israel, then shall inheritance be taken from the inheritance of our father and shall be put to the inheritance of the tribe where they receive. Meaning, the, uh, if they go deal with a husband, he's going to inherit it. So shall it be taken from the lot of our inheritance. And when the and when the jubilee of the, uh, the time of restoration of the children of Israel should be, then shall the inheritance be put to the inheritance of the tribe of which they are received. To the original owners, of course. Them. The husbands. So it should the inheritance be taken away from the inheritance of the tribe of our fathers. This is why it says here, and he inherited their substance. And his father Tobit's. Right there. So, in other words, Tobias took care of Edna and uh, Raguel in their old age and showed them great respect. When at the last they died, he buried them in Aquitaine. Tobias inherited Raguel's estate, a.k.a. property, as he inherited the estate, or a.k.a. the property, of his father's Tobits. So this is mainly about the laws of inheritance. That's what this is dealing with, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you all understood this. Hopefully this was of some great edification. Tobit 4 and 12 was a conversation between a father, Tobit, to his son, Tobias. This was not uh, God commanding the children of Israel or uh, anything. This was uh, dealing with Tobit to his son who was giving him commands before he was to die. And this was, he was told to marry somebody of his ancestors, specifically of his tribe of Naphtali, of his own kindred, meaning a relative of his tribe. Noah did the same thing. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob did the same exact thing, same exact way. And it was associated with what? Land. That's all this was dealing with, the laws of inheritance. Go back and study Numbers chapter 27, Numbers chapter 36. Read, in whole, read the whole entire book of Tobit. Um, um, understand the three major things that I want to go over dealing with marriage license, as they use that. Uh, was Tobit 6 really talking about witchcraft or was the ancient remedy of other um, people that also did the same thing? Can we find information on this today? Which we can had nothing to do with them serving the devil or anything like that at all. These are the same people that would accept, oh, well, Moses part of the Red Sea. He used a staff that, that turned into a snake. Wouldn't you call that magic then? Wouldn't you call that magic? Adam was taken from the ground. Wouldn't you call that magic? Number 22, a donkey talking. Number 21, uh, living up the serpent in the wilderness. Wouldn't you call that magic? Hmm? Water coming out of a rock, wouldn't you call that magic? Lot's wife turned to a pillar of salt, wouldn't you call that magic? You could do this all day. Burning bush, would you call that magic today? The plagues that hit Egypt, wouldn't you call that magic too? Today? Wouldn't people call that magic today? Being in the wilderness for 40 years and their shoes never swelled. Wouldn't you call that magic? What about Exodus 16 when he made manna fall down from, from the sky? 
Wouldn't you call that magic too? I can go on and on how many miracle signs and warnings we've seen in the Bible in what you call Old and New Testament. You call that magic today too. Definitely watch the documentary I did, Apocrypha on Trial. Um, also, YouTube.com slash Judah the Shooter. Shalom.